Good morning. Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer. And he says, just making sure everything's recording, I'm standing on the top of Ditchling Beacon in East Sussex on a beautiful sunny day. And I'm going for a four mile walk from the car park here, which is a National Trust car park, but I've just discovered that the uh, I've got membership tickets care of one of my viewers, which was very kind, Mike Dixon. Thank you, Mike. But the, uh, the car park, so that would enable me to have free parking, is not scanning at the moment, so I can't use it. Anyway, approaching a gate here, the Ditchling Pecan sign, which will go past the trig point, and will take me up onto the South Downs Way for a short while trig point is is just up there but on this occasion not so interested in the trig because my walk is going to take me around to uh, Standine where I've been before and there's a reason I wanted to come back here again because I want to tell you about a development that was planned for the high points of this part of the South Downs thank God it never happened this is looking north down onto the Weald from just down from the trig point on Ditchling Beacon and you get this amazing, terrific view looking down northwards to the North Downs. It's a little misty today. It's just a beautiful high point to come and take in the world. But it is, I've come out here at 7.30 in the morning and it's, it's, it's quite busy. I mean, I tend not to film when people are about, but I'm going to be going south in a loop and then coming back because it's, it's over there on the high points that there was at one point this idea of a development. There was also further along the idea of putting a racetrack, motor racing, on the Downs in the 1930s. And we'll talk about that shortly. Here, a bit of scrub wild plants, some orchids and various different things which is lovely to see but I'm heading up to the uh, the signpost which will take me south. never tire of the South Downs. Well, I don't think you can tire of the South Downs. Come at different points in the seasons. They're very different, of course. There's so much of them to explore. Some people may say, oh, but they all look the same, but they don't. The more you walk through them, the more unique you start to see. You see the nuances of the different parts. Now look at this view behind me here, just around here. Look at this. Isn't it? A, isn't it beautiful? It's a big, wide open space. A lot of it is um, tilled now. It's uh, uh, agricultural, which is not what it was. And I go on and on about that, I know. But it's still OK. It's still beautiful. Some may say it's a little barren because there's not so much trees and what have you. But can you imagine that on this high ridge here, all around here, 40 plots of housing probably large houses, probably rich people's houses. I think in the 30s, this scheme was put forward and a large area, attractive area on the top there to be built with an access road, presumably, I don't know where it would come in from, but presumably from Ditchling Beacon, I'm guessing. And private, no doubt, can't believe that such a scheme was put forward but it was. And also, you may remember I've been around Devil's Dyke quite a bit and I've made some videos around there. And as you know, if you've been following me, the Victorians uh, had their amusements up there. Well, it was also 
proposed and the land originally bought by a developer so that that would exclusively be another domestic uh, dwellings up there, a, a private estate with an access road uh, to it. And I, ca you know, I can't believe, I can't believe. Well, luckily, local opposition managed to uh, quell that, which is, which is fantastic. But later on, I should be telling you which just over these ridges in the distance there about the racetrack that was going to be put up. Just coming now, rounding, I've gone south for a little bit and I'm sort of heading down towards Lower Standine Farm and I'm going through this incredible valley, this beautiful valley where presumably once, as the ice melted, water would come off the side of these uh, downs, washing some of the chalk away, because it most likely was crumbly and the topsoil and boulders and who knows what, as it sloshed down this way, causing and gouging out these, these rather wonderful slopes. Not quite away from all the traffic, sadly, there's a road to the left of the screen in which the, um, I'm sort of walking parallel to a bit, which takes you from uh, the A27 in the south up towards the Ditchling Beacon. But I can also hear, sadly, the, uh, the whir of traffic on the A27, which is a, a mile or so to the south. And that's, uh, even here, it's a real shame. But it would have been worse had there have been a racetrack having meetings here. And it was put forward in 1935. And I think the council, Brighton Council, were very much up for it. I suppose they felt that it would provide jobs. They felt it would provide economy uh, and they could uh, rent out the space or what have you. I don't know how, how it would have worked, but it was quite a, a, a big racetrack with um, this, well, not really a figure of eight, it's a very odd shape uh, racetrack, taking in the contours, I suppose. So, you know, you can imagine, this wasn't the area, but you can imagine cars, you know, racing down these sort of slopes. Um, and the area, they said, well, it won't disturb anything because we will fence it off in pastel coloured fencing. And you just think, what? That is such a bizarre thing, 1935. Well, luckily, due to public opinion and protests, it never happened. Um, the project also ran out of money and um, the will sort of died when the Second World War came about, really. That's what put the kibosh on it for sure. And so sometimes, sometimes, the outbreak of major disasters, like we're going through COVID at the moment, sometimes those sort of things can stop some rather negative development work going on. I wonder if COVID has actually done anything there. If, the, if it has and you're aware of anything, do let me know. Right, we're coming up to the bottom of this bit. You can hear the wind in the trees. It's rustling a little bit and I thought for a moment that there might have been a a stream breaking out from uh, the aquifer somewhere here but um, no it's just the, the leaves and the, the wind on the leaves we're coming up to a gate let's go that and press on sometimes they are a little confusing these gates
I've just come out onto um, the road. I've just sort of circled round where I was in the valley and I've gone past, um, I guess it must be Lower Standon House, which um, I've just circled round. Great big house. It's just up, it's just up there into the sun. Sorry about that. And I'm walking up here up to a barn. This is the road that I started my walk the other day when I was doing a circular walk around the Chattery, which I believe I'm pronouncing completely wrong, but I can't remember what the correct way of pronouncing it is now. So there's a beautiful flint barn here. And obviously in there, scaffold services. And now I'm gonna go up here a bit and then I've got to turn right shortly past this house. What a beautiful place to live. Absolutely amazing in the middle of nowhere. And so I'm gonna go up this lane and then I start my return. So nice old old Land Rover there looks a bit knackered, doesn't it? top of the hill and I'm almost on my way back to the South Downs way and I'm on the crest looking back down towards Brighton which is behind me uh, you've got the sea of course and then I did see earlier Chantonbury Ring which is quite some distance that way but there seems to be uh, wheat in this field and barley in this field and I think I've got it right now I think I'm beginning to remember barley beard Although, I don't think when it's growing, that is a beard. I think it had a spiky hair, but I guess if you turn it that way around, it's a long beard. It does look lovely in the wind, you know, swaying in the wind, all those little beardy strands, spiky hairs. So I'm on this path again at the edge of a field. Sometimes it's not always clear, is it, when you're walking where a path is. This is a stunning landscape. This is the area, this is the area where the 40 plots of houses would have been built. So instead of farmland, instead of all of this, this would have been a, a posh housing development. I say posh because it, I mean, you know, obviously it wouldn't have been um, cheap housing up here in the middle of nowhere. And to believe that anybody could even think that, but I'm guessing if this was in the 30s, as I think it was, that it's, you know, that's how people, they weren't really respecting the landscape back then. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to follow, like, and subscribe, become a patron. I will catch up with you on the next one. Till then, bye-bye, bye-bye.